Hello, my name is Donald, and I have the great pleasure of introducing the final team tonight. Uh, now, after all the hard work and blood, sweat, and tears that is what they do here, uh, at the end of the day, they're making a video game, uh, and, and fun is a huge part of that. And I have to say, I've never had more fun playtesting a game than I have with this team coming up next. I think they really uh, hit the, the uh, nail on the head on this one and really have a great eye for fun. So please help me introduce Heptagon. Thank you very much, Don, for that introduction. Uh, I am Alex Brown, and I have the privilege today of introducing my team, as well as talk a little bit about our game before we actually get into gameplay. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. This is Larry Hitch on the end here. <laughs> then we got Don Don, Taylor Camilletti, Anthony Rodriguez, uh, David Kulver, Andre Tofino, and myself, Alex Brown. <laughs> so, what is Salvage? And this is the game we're going to be talking about today. Salvage is a movie sci-fi platformer. You are the salvager. And his goal is to go into the wreckage of spaceships and collect the valuable materials that still remain. As you do this, you're going to have to jump, dash, and slide your way through the still uh, active security and also the debris and everything that's still floating around in space. As you go, you're going to encounter a lot of things that will help you along your way, such as the energy cells, repairs, invincibility, uh, speed boosts, and the valuable portion of the ship that you're here for are the salvage as well as the core. This is your ultimate goal. This is the most valuable portion of the ship that's still remaining. Uh, at this time, I'm going to hand it off to JD Andres. They're going to talk a little bit about the systems behind us. Thank you. So, the component system is a design where you build components and assemble them together in, into game objects. Um, for example, the player is made up of several components. It has the physics component that uh, controls movement. It also has a uh, light component that illuminates the area around the player. There's a component that animates the 3D model on the player, and there's a few more components. Once you create one of these components, um, you uh, can modify them and assemble them into game objects with a text file. Using these text files is uh, very simple and efficient. And it makes adding stuff uh, very easy. And uh, since this process is so fast, uh, we were able to create complex objects that you can see in our game. Now to talk about how to uh, put these objects into our levels, I'll give you DD. Team cohesion. We've all gotten along very well this month. 
Uh, and if you've gone up into the studio a couple weeks ago, you would have seen just doodles of stuff we've done on the border. We're just having fun and having a good time together. So uh, a couple things about what wrong. The first thing is a lack of direction and experience. Uh, this is our first time working with a team this big on a project this large. Uh, and because of that, we didn't really know what we were doing at the start. Uh, completion criteria. Uh, those who are programmers know we have these things called user stories. And they're basically the tasks we need to complete. Uh, we didn't really know what go would go into these tasks to start with. And so it took us a little bit of time to really understand what we needed to put into these. So we didn't have a good direction there. Uh, misscheduling. Again, lack of experience. We didn't know how long these tasks would really take us, and sometimes they took half the time we thought they would, sometimes they took three to four times the time we thought they would. So it put us off a little bit. Uh, concentration, this is kind of the opposite to the team cohesion. There were many times where we would be uh, having a meeting and we'd just get distracted by something, start talking about a different video game, or start doodling on the board, but uh, because of that we were able to have fun. Uh, and this is less what we're wrong, more just a suggestion for the upcoming teams. Use your bug list. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to uh, communicate with your team with things that are going on with the game and make sure that things are completed. Uh, but this time, I'm going to hand it off. If Taylor, you would like to step us through some of our gameplay. Sure. All right, guys. So I hope you guys are ready to run and collect some salvage. We're going to have Andres playing first. We, uh, we have three levels in our game, and we like to rate them on difficulty of John's because John is our, where is John? John is our level designer, and he is an evil mastermind. We, we rate the first level about one and a half Johns, second level about two and a half Johns, and the third level is about 73 Johns and a Batman utility belt. So, uh, we're going to have John play the third and final level. So, let's get started. I'm going to mess around with some options. Alright, so he's going to play level one. I'll turn off the ghost first, which I'll explain a little bit later. All right, let's get started, level one. All right, so you see, collect the ship's core right there. Uh, we made this uh, area so you guys can get a feel for how the game's gonna be. Basic jumping in, double jumping right here. In a little bit you'll get a slide, and then soon you'll be able to smash through objects, great force and vengeance. All right, so that's our first challenge right there. Extremely difficult. All right, Andre's doing pretty good in the story level. Alright, there's the first checkpoint and the game is about to begin. And as you can see, right when we hit the checkpoint, his battery is draining at the top left of the screen. So he's got to collect all the energy for us to make sure he does not die. He's going to pass the first enemy. You do not want to deal with those guys. If you stick around too long, besides the fact that your energy is going to run low, you're going to die, they're going to shoot you. So he's going to kill that guy and immediately get a repair for him to repair his energy. give options for players because our game, as I said, John is evil mastermind likes to make difficult challenges, so we give him hard paths and easy paths. Andres is taking two hard paths now. He's feeling pretty brave. Alright, Andres, dodge those projectiles. One! Alright, nice. Get out of there. Last check win of the level. Now you get to see the trampolines. This was a fun, very fun uh, way we got these in the game. It was at first a bug, but it, it turned into us having a great idea to just throw this game and actually make it work properly. Alright, Andres, getting close. Kill these last few enemies, jump over these lasers, and then we're at the bottom stretch. Alright, you can see the energy core in the distance now. So Andres, you better just run straight to that core. And what is this? Asteroids form!
But he wants that salvage. He's got to make his money somehow.
So one of the menus that we went into in between the levels was the ghost selection menu. There's actually eight different options there. There's the developer ghosts, and then there's uh, one ghost per profile. And each of those options has the ghost that is the absolute best time and the ghost that is the absolute highest score. So as you're playing through, it is actually recording your gameplay. It's recording your position, the animations that are being started, and which emitters are on and off, just so that it can create the visual effect of you being there later. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to ask, uh, who dreams of all these evil tricks? <laughs> that guy right there. <laughs> <laughs> A very good job. I mean, the complexity is overwhelming, so uh, it's very enjoyable. So yeah, very good job. Thank you. James, coming up, round two. Yes, I know your team name is Heptagon. I was kind of confused because at the end it's G. O N. I thought it was G A W N E or John Gon. Um, can you explain why the sudden change, or was it always like that? Security. Can we uh, get this <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I worked out of the community college situation for a number of years, and one of the things that's very apparent is gender is only male. Yeah, are there, are, is there a problem with uh, women entering into this field? Maybe that's more a uh, collegiate problem. First thing, I see age-based, there's no age-based, either, so we have a diversity in age. Do you see yourselves, uh, this is all game-based, I was on a cruise recently, and I was sitting next to an Air Force gentleman, and he said, we're, we're using your technology to fly planes before we get into a real flight. Do you see yourself in the field, um, internet, I'm sorry, um, education, not just gaming, do you see yourself as you graduate going in with a need that needs to be filled for education and or the armed forces using your skills? Um, actually, there are a lot of companies here in Orlando that do a lot of military simulation, and they come to Pulse Out all the time. Um, recruiting and just telling everybody what they what they are producing. And yes, along with that, I'm actually going to be uh, teaching at Mighty Tech Camps over this next summer, and I'll be teaching teenagers how to program, which is awesome. Do you have any idea how many man hours you actually have in putting this game together? A lot. No, no, no. I just said that. <laughs> we, we work at least 100 hours a month, more than that, like individually. Like, all of our user stories were listed. There was, there was yeah. a lot. I don't even I don't know. It's, it's fun. I like it. I, I can see that. Um, the, um, can I ask you a question? No, you want to? Um, um, I have no one to do it off the top of my head, so. Hey, will you ask the question if it's me? No. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anybody else? All right, it looks not. Thank you very much. All right, one last time, please. These guys put in a lot of effort and gave their money. Thank you, Ron, and all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.